Welcome back to the Boot Tragedies. Today we're going to talk about what the Saints should do with that second round pick, number 40 pick in the draft. But before that, we're going to you know recap Brian Mercy. Saints take him with the 29th pick in the draft. Um, a lot of debate has already been sparked about, you know, was it a good pick, was it not? No one's going to know that, but everybody's entitled to their opinion. For me, I like the pick so far, man. We filled a lot of needs in free agency uh, at the defensive and defensive tackle spot uh, and other spots, obviously quarterback. Um, so the Saints just took the best player available at a position of need, which I think defensive tackle definitely needed some help, especially after losing some guys in free agency. So I'm really, really happy with the pick. I like what I see on tape so far. Definitely going to gonna have more on him um, later in the week and uh, probably later this month. But we're here to talk about that 40th pick and what the Saints should do. It's a lot of talent left on these draft boards. Uh, the middle of the draft is really, really talented, so I'm glad the Saints have this 40th pick. And we just kind of talk about some guys that are left. We can start with the, the biggest elephant in the room, which was Will Levis. Um, man didn't get drafted in the first round. Some people had him going in the top five, top ten. And if you turn on the tape, he was not a top five player. He was not a top ten player. And obviously NFL scouts, NFL GMs, they thought the same thing. Now he has a lot of talent. 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 230, uh, can move a little bit, has all the physical tools, but he was never going to be a first-round pick, in my opinion. Um, and obviously that did not happen. But the Saints did say a quarterback was a possibility for them um, at that 29th pick, so maybe they considered it. Maybe they considered Hendon Hooker. Um, but it's something to watch. Maybe they're just saying that just so you know someone can try to move up to get that 40th pick. But if the Saints did draft Will Levis, it'll be a question mark for me. It'll definitely be a question mark for me just because I just can't imagine a room with Derek Carr, Will Levis, Taysom Hill, and Jameis Winston. I know Taysom Hill's not a full-time quarterback, but you basically got four guys on the roster that can play quarterback and only – one can be on the field at all times. We know Taysom can get out there in some different areas, but with Jawan Johnson um, coming back and maybe us drafting a tight end, maybe his role is going to be limited in that tight end position. So I just can't see us doing that, but I'm just going to assume it's a possibility. Um, the guy that I really want, the second guy I'm going to talk about is Michael Mayer, tight end from Notre Dame. I think he's a really, really good player, uh, 6'5", 250. He's a, a true tight end. Everything you want from a tight end, he's probably the most complete tight end in the NFL draft. Yeah, uh, Kincaid, who ended up going to the Bills, he might be a better pass catcher, route runner, more, you know, you're faster than uh, Michael Mayer. But Michael Mayer is a true, true tight end. He can block. He can, you know, catch. He can do all the things that a tight end needs to do. He can be a three-down tight end, you know, not just a receiving threat. He's 250, can, you know, stick his hand in that ground and block some guys. That's what the Saints were lacking. Um, we had Jawan Johnson, who's a great receiving threat, but his block is not up to par. So usually when he's on the field – it's probably going to be a pass play with Michael Mayer. He gets you that versatility um, to run the ball right behind him or to go off for pass pass catches. So I, I would really like this pick if the Saints were to, you know, to go in that direction. Then you got guys who are first-round talents in the defensive backfield that you know probably can fall to the Saints. You got Joey Porter Jr. from Penn State, who a lot of people had you know as a, a top three corner in the drafts, uh, but he did not go in the first round. Uh, he's a 6'3 corner, about 190. He has really good technique, which, I mean, that makes sense. His dad played in the NFL. Um, I think he'd be a good player. Do I think the Saints need a cornerback? Absolutely not, but it wouldn't surprise me. We didn't need a cornerback last year. We got Alante Taylor, and he turned out to be great. So I'm not going to judge him for that. Now, Brian Branch, who I thought was a first-round pick, he's a guy that I actually thought was going to be a first-round pick, Brian Branch from Alabama. He kind of plays safety. Can't play in that nickel roll, that corner sometimes. Um He's kind of like a Tyron Matthew, um, not as good as Tyron coming out, but that's not saying much. A lot of people are not as good as Tyron coming out, but I do think he's a really, really good player. Can't play free safety. Like I said, can't play that nickel role. Kind of that role that P.J. Williams played for us, uh, you know, in the box, sometimes nickel, sometimes safety. I think he has that versatility to play anywhere on the field, playing in, uh, you know, Alabama's defensive backfield. He was the, the star player in that backfield, in my opinion, in that uh, defensive backfield. He was the guy that always stood out when I watched the Alabama game. So it's the same for the land him. I would love, I love that. Like I said, he could play free safety, nickel roll. Can slide the corner if you really, really need to. That's not a strong suit, but he's very versatile. And that'll get him on the field, man. Obviously, our defensive backfield is really good with Tyron Matthew, Marcus May, Lattimore, uh, Adebo, and Alante Taylor. So it's going to be tough for him to get on the field. But since he can play multiple positions, that'll definitely, you know, jumpstart his career and you know, able him to get on the field much quicker. Some other guys at these same positions that I think the Saints could look at. Hendon Hooker, another quarterback. Um... Had a really, really good season coming off of ACL injury. So if the Saints were to look at a quarterback of the future, a guy that they want to sit two to three years behind Derek Carr, Henry Hooker may be uh, an option there. I just don't see that happening. Then you have Luke Musgrave, who I think is another really, really good tight end from Oregon State. He's about 6'6", 250. I don't think he's as good as Michael Mayer, but I think he's really, really, really good. Um, 
He's super fast at that size, so if, if the Saints draft him, I would not be mad at him. He's a really, really good player at that tight end position. Uh, the Saints will have options. The Saints will have options. It's a couple guards at that position. Um, you know, right now, the uh, early part of this draft, I don't think we'll take a guard, but they're there if we wanted to. Um, when it comes to the another tight end, actually, before I leave the tight ends, we got Darnell Washington. Obviously, this guy's a beast. He's a freak athlete. I mean, one of the best athletes in the draft. 6'7", about 265, 270. Obviously, he can block. Obviously, he can run. Obviously, he can catch. He's a super freak. If the Saints draft him, I will not be mad. Do I think he's worth the 40th pick? Who knows? Who knows? But I would not be mad at this pick. I promise you I would not be mad at this pick. This guy is a super, super freak. I, I mocked him in at least two or three drafts. I really like what I saw on tape from him. I mean, he was playing behind the best tight end in the nation, a guy that's probably going to go top eight next year, maybe top five if he really continues to do what he does. So I would not be shocked if the Saints landed with Darnell Washington. He's a really, really good player. I do think we're going to go an edge. Personally, I think we're going to go edge, um, maybe receiver if we're feeling, you know, Froggy, but I do think defensive end is probably probably the um the way the Saints are gonna go. And Keon White is the name that jumps off the screen for me. Um, he's six five, two eighty five. That's a big defensive end. That's what the Saints like. So I can definitely see him being on the Saints um draft board. But the guy that I think we should draft, uh, a guy that I've been watching, I'm gonna just I'm gonna screw up this name so bad. But I believe it's Eddie Tamiwa Adebare. Eddie Tamiwa Adebare from Northwestern, um, super, super freak athlete, man. Do measure it off the charts at the combine, uh, can run, he's big, he's strong. Everything you need, you know, from a physical standpoint, he has. Now, I do believe I mocked him to the Saints at one point in the draft. He has a 12 and a half career sacks, uh, had a really solid season this year, nine tackles for loss. Five sacks the year before, had eight and a half tackles for loss, uh, four and a half sacks. He's a really, really good player, man. He's another guy that's very versatile. That can be split inside and outside. Uh, he's big enough. He's about 285. Brian Bercy was, a, what, I think, about 295. So he's 6'2", 285. Really, really good athlete. Now, I'm I'm telling you he's a good athlete, but I don't think you understand. This dude ran a 4'4", 40-yard dash. A guy that can play defensive tackle or defensive end, Running a 4 4 9 40 yard dash is unheard of. It's amazing. It's just super, super crazy. He had a 37 and a half inch vertical, a 10 foot 5 inch broad jump, uh, bench press 27 pounds. I mean, these numbers are absolutely insane. This is like Elvin Kamara type numbers out of a, you know, inside of a 6 3, you know, 285 pound man. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, so if the Saints were to draft him, I would be ecstatic, man. It's a super, super good athlete. Um, a little raw. Not super, super raw, has some pass rush moves, um, has to get a little stronger, but who doesn't? Who doesn't have to get stronger? Who doesn't have to, you know, develop more uh, for second round picks? But this guy can be an absolutely stud in the second round. I would really like if the Saints draft him. This is the guy I'm kind of leaning towards. I've seen some people having him mocked to the Saints in the first. So if you could get him to the, you know, in the second round, that would be an absolute steal in my opinion. You know, some of the cons they have listed for him is he just lacks that prototypical height because he is about 6'2", six 6'3". Uh, six you know, you want those 6'4", six 6'5", six guys with those long arms you know to get to get on those tackles so he lacks that but man he makes up for it in, you know, in other areas he's very very fast he has good pad level he's super explosive but obviously we know he's explosive he ran a 4 4 9 40 yard dash man uh, so I will be very intrigued to see what the Saints do with this 40 year pick man uh, it's, it's a lot of talent out there like I said it's going to be a lot of talent the Saints can go in a lot of different directions I have no idea what they're going to do um, I'm about to just go look through this overall, you know, rankings, names on players. Anybody jump out at you, man, let me know in the comments. We can start off with the best player available. This is according to ESPN rankings. You got Will Levis, Michael Mayer, Joey Porter, Brian Branch, Luke Musgrave, Hendon Hooker, uh, Steve Avila, offensive guard TCU, uh, Keanu Benton, defensive tackle Wisconsin. Obviously, we're not going to go there. You got John Domingo. Actually, let me talk about the receivers because the receivers, the receivers, I didn't talk about it. Maybe the Saints go receivers, so I'll actually talk about the receivers. You got John Domingo um, from Ole Miss, a big 6'2", a 220 guy. It's a good receiver. He's a really, really good receiver. Uh, I won't go into too much detail about all of them. You got Jaden Reed from Michigan State, who's kind of a smaller guy, uh, got good separation. I watched, I watched a couple of, uh, you know, Film and highlights of him. We got Jalen Hyatt, who I saw a lot this season. Obviously, the Alabama game, you know, threw him on the scene. You know, may, maybe made him a, a, a possible first rounder. Obviously, that didn't happen. But dude's about six feet, one seventy five, runs four four. Um, in a big games, he showed up. Uh, so 
would I like this, you know, at 40? Probably not, just because I think I like the receiving room we have. Uh, then you got Cedric Tillman, Marvin Mims, Josh Downs, who I really, really like. And you got Nathan Dell from Houston, who I really, really like. I think those guys are going to end up being, you know, third rounders, maybe early fourth rounders, maybe late second, you know, if they get lucky. At the 40th pick, I don't think none of these guys, you know, are – going to be there for the Saints, or not going to be there. I just don't think the Saints, you know, are going to want to take one of these guys at that 40th pick, especially when you got guys like A.T. Perry and Rasheed Rice that are probably going to be there in the third, fourth, fifth round that are really, really good players. Uh, but other than that, man, I think the Saints are, are set. It's a lot of talent at that 40th pick, so you don't have to rush. If they trade back, that also wouldn't shock me. That also wouldn't shock me if they trade back. Maybe they trade up in a draft if they have a guy, you know, they had a first-round grade on that they really, really want. I can see them trading up in the draft as well to try to go get that guy. It's not going to take a lot you know to move up they have the 40th pick it's only about six or seven picks in front of them so it won't take too too much to move up in the draft maybe like a sixth rounder or fifth rounder or something like that so we'll see what the Saints do I'm just glad it's a lot of options I'm super solid with that first round pick I have no complaints uh in all honesty and I think if we take another edge rusher that'll be great man you're beefing up that defensive line um we've missed we swung and missed. Obviously, Davenport was a swing and miss. Peyton Turner swing and miss. Maybe he'll come into himself in year three. I just he just hasn't shown me anything that he will. So maybe we just hey keep swinging. You'll hit eventually. Um. So so we'll see what the Saints do. I know a lot of people want the shiny new toys. Everybody wants a running back. Everybody wants a receiver, cornerback, or something like that. But you gotta win this NFL game in the interior, man. Interior is gonna win you games in the NFL. Look at the Eagles. Um. Look at the Chiefs defensive line. You know, dominating the Eagles in that Super Bowl. Basically, you know, obviously got Pat. Mahomes that helps a little bit but you still need to beef up that offensive line and the defensive line I mean look at the 49ers man look at the 49ers yes they had weapons but that offensive line and defensive line carried them throughout the entire season all the top teams have good offensive lines and defensive line when the Saints were at their best the offensive line was one of the best in the NFL defensive line was really really good they need to just get back to that got to get a, a, a stout front seven we got good linebacks we got good secondary offensive line is not bad I think we're a top 10 offensive line in the league when healthy so just beef up that defensive line. Let's see what happens. But let me know what y'all think in the comments below. As always, just to be telling you.